Hi students and friends, welcome to the channel Learn and Teach by Sarayas. I will continue my video lesson for CAIE 5070 past papers and I was doing paper 4 for chemistry 5070. This time I have selected October November 2022 and the paper is 42. I'm not going to read the instructions as I have already discussed the instructions in my previous videos. So I'll start with the question number one. Three color colorless gases A, B, and C have the properties shown. Gas A, more dense than air and soluble in water. Gas B, more dense than air and it's insoluble in water. Gas C, less dense than air, soluble in water. Some sets of apparatus P, Q and R used to collect gases are shown. Here's P, Q and then we have R. <clears throat> A. State which set of apparatus P, Q or R is most suitable to collect gas A. P is more suitable to collect gas A because it is heavier or dense than air and also in uh, also soluble in water. So I will write P here. B, R is used to collect gas B. Number one, state why Q is not used to collect gas B. The reason is that B is more dense than air. You see here, B is more dense than air. B is more dense than air. You can even write B has higher density than air. Number three, state why R is more suitable than P to collect gas B. B is insoluble in water. So, you can easily tell when the gas jar was full. B is insoluble in water. Easily tells when the gas jar was full. C. State why R is not used to collect gas C. It's very simple. C is soluble in water. You see here, C is soluble in water, so you can't use this. C is soluble in water. Two, a student electrolyzes two aqueous solutions using the apparatus shown. A, name apparatus E. Apparatus E is beaker, so you write beaker here. B, complete the table. We have aqueous potassium iodide and dilute sulfuric acid. So at anode, we will get iodine. The name of the product is written here for aqueous potassium iodide. So observation will be solution turns brown. Solution turns brown. At cathode, hydrogen gas is produced. So we'll see the bubbles of colorless gas. So you can even write bubbles colorless because the bubbles of hydrogen gas has no color. At a note for dilute sulfuric acid, oxygen is produced. So you write again, you write colorless bubbles because also oxygen also does not have any color in water. 
<clears throat> at cathode hydrogen gas is produced because the bubbles of colorless gas it's already written here so you write hydrogen c describe the test used to identify oxygen gas glowing splint and relight or rekindle relight or rekindle because oxygen helps in burning number 3 the equation for the reaction of magnesium with dilute hydrochloric acid is shown mgs plus 2hcl aqueous gives mgcl2 aqueous plus h2 gas a student investigates the rate of this reaction at three different temperatures this is the whole setup you have magnesium and dilute sulfuric uh, hydrochloric acid in the conical flask and it's connected to apparatus f in each experiment the student adds dilute hydrochloric acid to magnesium the volume of hydrogen in apparatus f is recorded every every 30 seconds a name apparatus f now you have to write the name for apparatus f it's used to collect gas so it's gas syringe b name a piece of apparatus that the student could use to keep the temperature of the conical flask and its content constant can use thermostatically uh, thermostatically controlled water bath water bath thermostatically control c hydrogen gas is a product of the reaction one describe the test used to identify hydrogen gas for the test of hydrogen gas you can use burning splint of matchstick burning matchstick or splint Observe or squeaky sound is a result or observation for hydrogen gas. Number two, student uses the measurement of volume as time increases to determine the rate of the of this reaction. State a different measurement that the student could make as time increases to determine the rate of reaction. The mass of the flask contents, it will decrease or change. So you can have mass of con flask. B, in each of the three experiments, the contents of the flask are at different temperature. All other variables are kept constant. The three experiments are labeled X, Y, and Z. You see, for X, the temperature is 20 degrees centigrade. For Y, the temperature is 40 degrees centigrade. For Z, the temperature is 60 degrees centigrade. The hydrochloric acid is in excess in each of the three experiments. A catalyst is not used. Identify two variables that are kept constant in this investigation so you can write any two of uh, these like uh, you can write the mass of magnesium mass of magnesium particle size of magnesium Or you can even write concentration of acid use. Like mole of acid.
as hydrochloric acid is in excess in each of the experiments, so you can't write volume of the acid. E, the student plots a graph of the results. So on x-axis, we have time. On y-axis, we have volume of hydrogen per centimeter cube. Number one, describe how the graph is used to decide which experiment has the greatest rate. So it must have steepest, steepest gradient or at levels of first. This tells that this uh, experiment has greatest rate. So you, you will write graph levels of first or steepest gradient. Must have the greatest rate. Number two, write a letter in each box on the graph to identify experiments X, Y, and Z. X, Y, and Z. You see X, Y, and Z. For X, it's carried out at 20 degrees centigrade. Y is carried out at 40 degrees centigrade. Z is carried out at 60 degrees centigrade. So Z, Z must be of higher rate. So the graph which levels of first must be Z. So this is experiment Z. Experiment. Second experiment must be of Y. Because it's not labeling of before Z, but before X. The last one left will be X. Number three, describe how the graph shows that the reaction stops. <clears throat> the graph becomes parallel or horizontal or zero. Gradient becomes zero. Gradient becomes zero. Graph become horizontal. Or you can write graph level of number four. Explain why the reaction stop all the magnesium used up. All the magnesium is used up. Magnesium is the limiting reactant in this reaction. <clears throat> Number four, a student is provided with two bottles labeled A and B and a supply of water. One of the bottles contains one gram of solid potassium chloride, KCl. The other bottle contains one gram of solid calcium chloride, CaCl2. When potassium chloride dissolves in water, the change is endothermic. Endothermic means absorbs heat. When calcium chloride dissolves in water, the change is exothermic. So it means it's the one which releases heat. Plan experiments based on dissolving the solids in water to decide which compound is in each bottle, which compound produces the greatest heat change per gram of solid. Your plan may use any of the apparatus normally found in chemistry laboratory, but no other chemicals. Your plan must state all the measurements you need to make. Your plan must use the same experimental procedure for each solid. So we'll take equal volumes of water. Mass will, uh, is already provided. So we'll still bore the solids in water, <clears throat> measure the temperature using thermometer. Calcium chloride gives heat, which means it releases heat because uh, it's written in the questions exothermic. For potassium chloride, it must absorb heat. Though, so there must be fall in temperature for potassium chloride endothermic. So we will measure the temperature change. The greatest heat change indicates that calcium chloride is the sample.
So you write equal volumes of water used both solid dissolved in water and stirred measure the temperature using thermometer calcium chloride CaCl2 gives a rise in temperature while KCL gives drop in temperature. Greatest temperature or heat change that is rise indicates that the sample is calcium chloride. Thanks for watching. Press like and share my videos. Give comments. For more videos, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon.